Lemonade, let's talk about this. This is interesting. Lemonade is heading overseas, the insurance startup that uses artificial intelligence and chatbots to pay out claims in as little as three seconds. Count them, three. Recently, it announced it would be expanding to Europe. And joining us now is Daniel Schreiber, who is the co-founder and CEO of Lemonade. Daniel, great to have you here with us today. Good morning. Good to be here. Absolutely. What can you tell us about the plans to expand into Europe for Lemonade? Well, we've only been in the market like two and a half years, and we're now spread throughout the U.S. We cover most of the U.S. What we're finding is that consumers who are tend to be young, about 75% of our customers are under 35, are really flocking to this notion of a new kind of insurance, one that isn't conflicted, as you say, can pay claims in a matter of seconds, no paperwork, no hassle, and where underwriting profits go to nonprofits. Mm. Now, that kind of value proposition, that's universal. Right. People throughout the U.S. like it, but people really throughout the world do as well. So we've decided if people in Berlin and Tokyo and New York are using Spotify and Netflix and Uber, why not Lemonade? So you guys are notoriously transparent, which I love. You released <laughs> the 2018 Transparency Chronicle, listing $57 million in sales, 425,000 homes insured. What do you think was the most important development for Lemonade in 2018? Wow, there really was a great deal. <laughs> so we saw something like 500% growth, which was tremendous. But I think the most important thing really for us was we ranked number one, not only amongst first time users, but in terms of customer satisfaction in general. So growing fast is fabulous, but if you do that at the expense of customer satisfaction, that's a price not worth paying. Mm -hmm. You go now to any of the consumer rating sites, and you'll find that USAA and Lemonade compete for the number one spot in terms of customer satisfaction out of like three, 400 companies rated. So for us, delighting consumers, paying claims in those few seconds, getting rid of the hassle, getting rid of the conflicts of interest, that really came of age during 2018. When you have devastating disasters that take place where entire regions are, are decimated, uh, you think about Puerto Rico, you think about California with the Absolutely. wildfires, how do you go about approaching and using artificial intelligence to, to survey areas and to make sure that claims are met uh, when there is such a mass scale of devastation in a region like that? And that's really when an insurance company is tested, isn't it? It's all well and good to sell insurance. It's when disaster strikes that that's when the chips are down and when the, the, the metal of a company is truly tested. So the fires in California were devastating, many deaths, tremendous um, hardship to our customers and to consumers all over the place. We do a bunch of things. One of them is that we now use our AI, gets a direct feed from NASA satellites so that we can get um, alerted to disasters way before even consumers know that they're coming. Mm. So we actually use machine learning to, in real time, process a spectrometer imaging from NASA satellites 24-7 throughout the United States. So for example, we knew about the wildfires and the campfire and elsewhere within seconds of them breaking. And then we can send alert to our customers and do a lot of stuff that legacy, more people and paper-based insurance companies have a hard time doing. Let's talk about those legacy insurance companies. A bit of a, a battle, if you will, in advertising. So State Farm released that commercial where they were mocking AI and robots. They had this robot that was crying. You can see it right there. It was really, really, really creepy. Brad and I both watched this. <laughs> and it was a subtle, I maybe laughed. not so subtle shot at Lemonade. But then Lemonade went on to promote this ad basically firing back. Why, why the decision to go that route? Well, we found it remarkable that a company as venerable, you know, hundred year old, the largest insurance company in the nation that are a thousand times bigger than Lemonade would spend millions of dollars taking us on. I really found that interesting and deeply flattering, honestly. <laughs> um, but what we found and the reason we, we did something rather unusual, which is we paid money to promote their right. ad. And we thought, you know, I came across this quote by Spinoza and he says that when Paul says something about Peter, that tells you more about Paul than it does about Peter. Ah. In other words, this ad attacking us wasn't really telling you anything about Lemonade. Consumers love bots that pay claims in three seconds. They're nothing like this monstrosity that they show in their <laughs> ads. It is a monstrosity. <laughs> but when they decide to promote that, they're really revealing a lot about what is State Farm mm. and how they conduct stuff. And the fact that they've done these things for 100 years, they're happy to do them for the next 100 years. And I think that gives consumers a very stark choice. And we really love that. Right. We love the idea that they're being very upfront about what they are. They're mocking us, but I really think that's a bit of a boomerang that comes back and hurts them much more than it hurts us. Um, I want to talk about the company as well. You've raised over $180 million. Um, the most recent funding round, I believe, was in 2017. Uh, any plans to raise more capital? The company is well capitalized. It, it is. So we're blessed with deep-pocketed investors, whether it's SoftBank or Google or Sequoia or a bunch of other companies. So access to capital, thankfully, and so long as the company continues performing, 
isn't a big challenge. Insurance is a huge space. It's a multi-trillion dollar space. So I do imagine there will be more fundraising over time, but at the moment we've got a deep war chest and things are going pretty well, so not a priority right now. What do you think happens to those legacy insurance companies? Are they going to have to adopt machine learning and AI, maybe acquire companies like yours? How are they going to keep up with the, the changing times? I think they're going to have a real challenge. I think that they face what I call an Amazon moment, and I mean it in the following sense. I wasn't around the table at Walmart 20 years ago when Amazon came along, but I imagine that they thought something like, well, this is interesting, we'll keep an eye on it. If we have to, we can create our own website, we can buy our own companies. And they fail to understand that over time, the differences, differences don't converge, they diverge. And when you build a new company on a digital substrate where data and I are built into the very fabric of the company, you look at it 20 years later and the differences become more and more and more pronounced. I'm absolutely convinced that that's what's going to happen with insurance. That insurance companies that have 100 years of legacy are going to find that the assets that they built up over this time are actually liabilities. Mm. You have 40,000 brokers. Is that an asset or is it a liability? You've got 30-year-old tech. Is that an asset or is that a liability? Et cetera, et cetera. And for that reason, I think that actually the differences that are already pronounced now amongst first-time buyers of insurance, Lemonade outsells every legacy company out there. So that's a prediction or an indicator of where this is coming. But as big as those differences are today, I think they become bigger and bigger and bigger over the coming decades. Insurance companies struggled in the last recession. As we get the R word thrown around at the tail end of 2018, given the yield curve, is this something that you, you think about often or at all right now as we do, you know, uh, as we are in 2019 and many are speculating that by the end of 2019 and early 2020, we may see signs of a recession yet again? The short answer is no, because we have a different business model. So the way insurance companies usually make money is in one of two ways. They invest the float, they invest the money that they take from you, and if they don't pay your claims, they keep the money that's left over at the end of the year. Right. Our business model doesn't work that way. We take a flat fee. We never want to be in conflict with our customers. So we say, you pay us $100 in premium, 25% of that is going to be ours. We're never going to make more, never going to make less. In fact, if there's money left over at the end of the year, it goes to charity because we'd rather do that than be in conflict with you when you make a claim. Now, that's a familiar model from the tech sector where you take a flat fee, but it's a very novel model in insurance. And it really means that we're somewhat insulated from those vicissitudes of the markets and of other conditions because of our fundamental business model, which is much more of a tech company doing insurance than an insurance company trying to button on top throw a facade of technology in front of a 100-year-old edifice. It's a very different setup. All right, Daniel Schreiber is the co-founder and CEO of Lemonade. Daniel, thank you again for joining thank us. Thank you. Thanks, Daniel.